you ever had that family member or friend that no matter how hard you try, they never seem to appreciate a gift from you? I mean, sometimes they'll just give the shrug, mm, okay, thanks. Or even straight out come out and show their dislike by, really? You could have just given me the cash. How does that make you feel? We, as Christians, sometimes have that same attitude towards the gift that Jesus gave to us, the Holy Spirit. Let's talk about that. to God in prayer. Most gracious Father, we come right now thanking you and praising you for all that you've done in our lives, thanking you for all you're doing and all you will do. We ask God that you would just help us to get into this word and learn more about you, learn more about your precious gift of the Holy Spirit that you've given to us. We ask God that you would just touch our hearts and let us know how we can respond and how we should respond. We thank you, we praise you. It's in your name we pray, amen. When the day of, the Pen of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Twas on a day quite like this, there came a mighty rushing wind, and the Spirit filled the place where the people were. Cloven tongues did appear and landed on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. It's a song called Power, but it is almost verbatim speaking on Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, which is what happened on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost is the 50th day after Easter, the 50th day after the, it was the celebration of feast and all these days had meaning. It was the 50th day after the Passover. Those things, everything fell in line. Jesus told them to go and wait for this gift that they were going to get. And the gift that they received was the Holy Spirit. And as they received the Holy Spirit, the utterance that they were given was not just speaking in tongues, but also in tongues of the languages of everyone that was around. Because the people there, they heard them all speaking and some of them were thinking, how can I understand what these guys are saying? These are Hebrews or some of them were Greeks, but these guys were not learned. They didn't go off to, to school to learn different languages, but they were all speaking the gospel in the native tongue of each and every person that was around. And there were so many different ones. And some people that heard it didn't understand what they were saying. And they were saying, oh, these men are drunk. And Peter stood up with boldness and said, these men are drunk. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. And he's, they started preaching on Jesus. Men of Israel, hear these words. 
Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him, losing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. So Peter stood up and he started talking to his fellow Israelites and he's saying, listen, we're talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And then won't you know the one whom you used unsaved people to kill him, to crucify him, you rejected him, but he could not be contained in death. He overcame death, hell, and the grave, and he has all power. And they started thinking about it. So, so what do we do? When they were asking, what do we do? What should we do? How do we, how do we fix this? How do we get what you have, this peace, this salvation? And he said, believe and be baptized. You have to do this and you have to, and because it wasn't just for, for us. It's, it's for you and your children and all those who are in faraway places because this is what God desires. He desires for all to be saved. He doesn't want anyone to be away from him, apart from him which is what you are when you die in sin. Eternal separation from the Father. And God doesn't want that. And that's why Jesus gave the Holy Spirit to help us in the things that we're doing, to help us to get through these things. The Holy Spirit wasn't just here for speaking in tongues or whatever one person says. But the Holy Spirit is, in Greek, a paraclete, which is something that comes alongside, something that's there, someone who is there with you at all times. Because Jesus said he would not leave us alone without a helper. The Comforter, the Holy Spirit, is who he sent to help us. So we have to understand that we, we learn from God. We hear from the Holy Spirit through reading scripture. We speak to God through prayer. And a lot of people think that you have to say these eloquent words and these great things. But the Bible tells us that you just speak to God. God goes to your heart and he knows what you what you need in your heart and he speaks through the holy spirit to god because we don't know i mean honestly we don't even know what we need all we know is what we want a lot of times and sometimes as with the gifts it's not even what we wanted but God knows exactly what we need and how wonderful is it to have someone who can give us perfect gifts. And there is no need to return it. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were 
were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. When Peter said, be saved from this corrupt generation, he was evangelizing to the crowd. And many from that crowd were saved. They accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. It says about 3,000 were added to the numbers from those who were up in the, in the room waiting like Jesus told them to. So there was a bunch of things with that. One, they were obedient and they waited. Remember, they were still a little apprehensive, a little scared because things were going on and people were still searching for followers of Jesus to crucify them and to throw them in prison, to persecute them. But 3,000 or so people accepted and they all devoted their lives to meeting together. They sold all they had so everyone would have something and no one would be without. They met at the temple for prayer. They met at the temple for, um, for learning, for studying. They broke bread together and they communed together. So why should we listen to the Holy Spirit? Because that's what was leading Peter when they received that power. Power came from God and Peter spoke to the people. But we should listen to the Holy Spirit because number one, he's God. We as Christians believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit three in one because he's God. Number two, because he brings the gospel to us. He tells us, he opens it up to us. He explains things to us in the gospel. And number three is because he brings us that salvation. He shows us salvation through Jesus Christ. Again, he's there to lead us. He's there to be with us. This isn't like a conscience. This is a lead, a guide, a comforter left to us as a gift from Jesus Christ himself. Okay. So what's the point? Holy Spirit fills God's people to teach and empower us. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to be able to gather however we can. We ask God that you would just continue to touch our hearts, speak to our hearts, and let us follow you. God, we thank you for the Holy Spirit that you've given to us as a gift to help us as we work our way through this life and as we continue to try to be more like you we ask dear lord jesus that you would just bless each and every person that is listening we ask that you would bless them to be able to be as bold as peter and speak the gospel to our friends to our family to anyone who will hear and we just thank you, we praise you, we glorify your name. In your name we pray, amen. All right, have a great week.